So last night, a clergy colleague of mine, as a matter of fact, who was somebody that uh, guest preached here not too long ago, sent a lot of us a beautiful recording of something called the Canticle of the Turning. And it's a lovely Celtic praise and worship song, and in one of the verses, it makes an allusion to today's gospel. It speaks about not one stone being left upon another. But it does so in the context of the edifices of empire, of wealth, of greed, of oppression. And gosh, isn't that wonderful to think that God's going to throw all that stuff down? I mean, that's fantastic, right? Bring about perfect justice and harmony and peace. Problem. When we actually read today's gospel, it wasn't edifices like that that Jesus was talking about. It was the temple, the very center of religious and spiritual life in his time. And he pointed to that building, arguably the grandest and most beautiful in the known world of the time. And he said, that one is coming down. Nothing's going to be left of it but wrong. It's a little harder to mine some good news out of that. Now, in our reality today, at least in our part of the world, we have fortunately not faced the sort of sudden violence that was the Jewish-Roman War to which Jesus was referring. But nonetheless, as I look around this sanctuary, I realize that even at my tender age, and with my limited tenure in the church, which is much less than many of you, I already feel a strong nostalgia, sometimes edging even toward a bit of despair, for what's been lost in recent years and decades. It just seems like the church is not what it once was. I remember going to visit my grandmother in Massachusetts and sitting in her very full church in the early to mid-1980s where there were three thriving services. And it was just sort of the done thing in the community. And if you weren't an Episcopalian, you were going to be a Methodist or a Lutheran or a Catholic. You basically get the idea. And that's simply not the reality in which we live anymore. So it may be happening subtly, it may be happening slowly, but nonetheless the feeling is still there that the temple is being thrown down one stone at a time. So that's where we need to begin looking at the rest of the passage. What is the purpose of of God allowing such a thing to happen, of God even foretelling us that such a thing will happen. Today's gospel, of course, is in the context of a single historical event, but I think that as we look at all of human history, we realize that this sort of throwing down, this sort of destruction of the spiritual and the cultural and the religious center happens over and over again. And it's fair to say that perhaps it's happening right here, right now, in our midst. Well, maybe we can mine some good news out of this. When the church is really strong, when it's really stable, when it's really, to use a word we throw around a lot, really sustainable, there's a hazard to that. And the hazard is it gets insular. It becomes very easy to think that coming every Sunday for worship and then doing the Wednesday night potlucks and the bridge clubs and the whoever, whatever else it is we do together is the end all and be all of our life in Christ because it's all around us. We do it all the time. It just makes sense and all of our neighbors are doing it too. So it's enough, right? But in today's reality, all of that is called into question. The overwhelming majority of our neighbors have an ambivalent at best and probably hostile at worst relationship with the faith and the church that we are part of. The culture is very pluralistic and seems to be going in all directions at once. But doesn't that actually open up a window of opportunity? 
opportunity that perhaps we shut when things seem more stable and more sustainable. It's in those moments that we have the opportunity, and I'm not saying it's an opportunity many of us want. It's not a comfortable thing. It's often not even a safe thing. But we have the opportunity to bear witness in front of the emperors, in front of the kings, in front of the judges, in front of the powers and principalities of a world that may actively resist the beautiful truth that we come here to gather around week after week. And what Jesus tells us is that if we have the trust, if we have the willingness to empty ourselves, to not set up expectations, to not prepare what we're going to say, to not try to come up with a well-planned defense before things go crazy, and simply to say, I trust that at the moment I need it most, the words and the wisdom that no one will be able to contradict or withstand will be given to me. His promise is that that kind of faith, that kind of endurance, is going to be rewarded with an eternal life of joy beyond all imagination. Not one hair on your head shall perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. So nobody wants to live through a time when the temple's being thrown down, and when not one stone Rest will rest upon another. But perhaps it's at times like those that we are actually at our most powerful. So friends, I know that for those of you who have been here the longest, this might perhaps be the most uncomfortable. It might feel like the church and our faith is asking of us things that it's never asked before. Things seem so right and so proper in the past, and now... Now they seem crazy and so demanding and so unstable, but I promise you God is doing a good work in the midst of all that. And so I know you're being asked to step out of the comfort zone day after day. I know that that's not fun, but please remember it is 